but get yourself a scanner. The, the stocks that are making the biggest moves, guys, are the ones that continuously get deep out of the money call bets with short term expiration. And if you look at the biggest movers today. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So uh, day two, right? I, I think when people talk about uh, relief rallies, um, most of the time it's coming from a, a very, very aggressive kind of oversold uh, conditions. Um, I, I think what we've seen now over the last couple of days is more of like, whew, we dodged a major bullet with this whole uh, Evergrande thing. And the most important part of kind of this day two rally was it, it really did feel like a sigh of relief. It felt like the bulls, um, you know, really did kind of get above, you know, the people were just kind of hiding underneath their table and hoping kind of a next leg of this first part of the Evergrande news is going to fall. And, and right now it looked fine, right? And now the question is, now that we had this uh, two-day rally, and this is a, a pretty aggressive two-day rally, basically got rid of that uh, Monday decline that we saw the lows of the Dow down 900 points. The question is, what happens next, right? Uh, what is the market going to do uh, going forward? And, you know, yesterday we talked about some levels uh, on the queues that, again, we reclaimed uh, the 50-day moving average but got rejected off the five. Uh, this rally today, well, reclaimed the five-day moving average and got rejected off the 10. So you could, you could kind of see the cycle, right, over and over again. It's like literally – you know, walking up steps. You don't walk up uh, step 12 before taking up step two. So the one thing that I think every bull, um, you know, including myself, again, I, you know, as much as I talk about, you know, I'm not a bull, I'm not a bear, I'm an opportunist, but let's be honest, everybody loves a good bull market, a good bull run. But at, at certain point, you know, the person with common sense, the common sense in me and says, well, look, we just had this really, really big uh, three day move, especially in the last 24 hours, uh, off the bottom. Well, doesn't the market deserve a rest? And that's a very, very fair point because, again, the last thing you want to do is kind of have this overextended bounce and give you know the bear side of the equation every single opportunity. For right now, at least the bears still have a little bit of control from the macro point of view because we're still beneath all the supply that we got gapped down on Monday. So for the bulls to really seize control of this tape, we're gonna need to close above 376. And as we said last night uh, in the video, baby steps, right? You can't get, you know, you can't confirm the five without confirming the 50. You can't confirm the 10 without uh, confirming the five. So on and on and on and on. So right now, for the bulls to have some control, continued control, uh, especially kind of spilling over into next week, now we need to take control of the 10-day moving average, which is roughly around the 373.50 level. I, see, I, I think the worst thing that could happen tomorrow for the bulls, if we get a, another gap up, and we get a gap up into supply. We don't want to see that, right? We, we want to see is a very light, I don't want to use the word, you know, light volume open, but we want to see a very light, maybe red open, right? Maybe trap some uh, eager shorts on rising 60 minute support uh, on a lot of names and kind of just mosey along, reclaim the 10 day moving average. Because the one thing we don't want to do is have a whole day's move having pre-market get stuffed at supply, roll over and start getting hit again. We don't want to see that. So in, in a perfect world tomorrow, we see uh, a red open trap, red to green, reclaim today's channels and start moving back to the upside. Now, what you guys have seen, especially you know, for you guys who are, are, are active throughout the day, what you'll notice is not every stock is going crazy, right? A lot of names are just still so much underneath supply that they can't rally it. And again, that's the whole point. Indexes uh, reclaim levels first, and then slowly, one by one by one, 
you see stocks reclaiming level, levels after. They just don't go at one time. You know, I don't know why they just don't, right? And you figure, well, if the NASDAQ 100 is up, everything should be up in the NASDAQ 100. Yeah, yeah, you figure that. But again, you know, rationale says that some stocks are up, some stocks are down, and it's going to take a little bit of time for everything to kind of regroup. And again, if you remember going back to the remount or the reclaim of the 50-day moving average on May 20th, they started one by one. They started with Netflix, and then they started with Amazon, and then Apple, and then NVIDIA, and then everything else got pulled up over the course of time of kind of celebrating uh, prosperity above the 50-day moving average. So that's kind of what we need to see, uh, you know, kind of spilling over into next week. Look, is there is there opportunity? Absolutely. But I, I think, again, and I've been kind of harping on this for, you know, a pretty long time here. And for all you guys looking, this is what I use uh, to kind of monitor option flow. Uh, this is flow algo. There's, there's plenty of these things. Uh, there's options alerts. That's good. There's cheddar flow. That's good. There's black box uh, something or other. That's good. It tracks uh, option activity. But, you know, get yourself a scanner. The, the stocks that are making the biggest moves, guys, are the ones that continuously get deep out-of-the-money call bets with short-term expiration. And if you look at the biggest movers today, you'll see that, right? You'll see that on Exhibit A, you'll see that Exhibit B, and you'll see that Exhibit Z. The, and again, I'm not an options trader, but, but I figured out a long, long time ago, and it took me years and years and years to actually uh, use an option scanner, that the options market really does dictate, right? Incredibly dictate uh, the equities market. The more repeat buyers uh, that are coming in for aggressive uh, out of the money calls, the higher probability that the equities market is going to catch up to there. And that's exactly what we've seen today. So, for example, uh, when you look at a name like uh, AFRM, right? Yeah, I'll give you a perfect example today. You know, I'll show you the pivots in a second. So, AFRM, you know, we talked about this briefly. I don't even remember if I even talked about it on last night's video. I just don't remember. It's such a long day. But, you know, but this was a, a stock that reclaimed the five day moving average and needed to reclaim the 10 to kind of wake up. Now, nothing was going on with the stock. If you, if you remember, for you guys who, who traded this morning, the stock was kind of sitting there all morning, right? You know, 15 and a half, 16, 15 and a half, 16. And if you look at, and this is just literally going back to, let's just see what time. This is going back to like 10.30 in the morning. They started coming in for the 120s and they were coming in for the 125s right look look at the expiration they were coming for next week's 120s uh tomorrow's expiration the 25s the 25s the 30s the 35s the 150s and this thing just absolutely went you know just went absolutely bananas because the the, the options market was dictating right and you can see here by the 60 minute chart and you'll see it right it was just sitting here all morning you know 15 and a half 16 and then finally the options market kicked off and this thing absolutely exploded, right? So I, I think for all you guys who, who don't trade on the option side, right? Like me, like I'm not an options trader, I trade on the equity side. I, I, I think it's silly not to invest uh, a few bucks a month into an option scanner. It's gonna give you a lot of great color, okay? Uh, it's gonna show you where the aggressive institutional money flow is. And when that correlates, right? When that correlates into uh, a daily chart confirmation, that's when you're going to see a really, really aggressive thing. It's not even, you know, it's not even, uh, it's not even uh, one name. You can go through a whole bunch of names today and you'll see. The key is not to anticipate a move. So, for example, you'll notice there's a lot of option flow all day today on Tesla, right? When Tesla was, uh, when, it, when they took it down red, you started seeing dip buyers coming in for the 750 weeklies, for next week's 760s, for next week's 780s, for, for tomorrow's 755s, right? You could see where the buyers are coming in. It doesn't mean, right, the stock will go higher. All it means are people are placing their bets. For the options market and the equities market to kind of form a beautiful marriage, they're gonna need to correlate a daily chart. And when the daily chart correlates and the options market hits, then and only then, is the stock probably going to anticipate and start going in that direction? There's two types of option betters. And then again, I'm not an options expert. I'm probably one of the most uh, novice people to have a conversation about options, but I know one, a thing or two about price action. And there's two types of option flow we see, right? The first one is betters that are betting on a future price action 
without macro confirmation. Those are the, you know, those are the people who are holding a lottery ticket. Maybe they know something, maybe they don't, but those are the people that are saying, I hope it gets there. And those are, the, and then there's the ones that are looking at the charts, looking at the daily confirmation and say, I will make the same bet, but I will make the same bet after a stock confirms. So what I've noticed in this type of environment or any type of environment, when you see aggressive option flow, the one you want to really concentrate on is when the stock is confirming macro. All the other ones, the $800 bets, the $850 bets, they're fine and all, but right, that's like a perfect world if you step in shit and you know it doesn't dirty your shoe. The key is find the ones with the aggressive option flow, repeat buyers, same expiration, outside of the money, near-term expiration, and when they do correlate, uh, when they do correlate into uh, a daily confirmation, you're usually going to have uh, pretty good results. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about today's day, and we'll see exactly uh, what we had. Again, not everything went right. Again, the, the indexes sometimes are going to uh, give you kind of a full sense, right? 500 points in the Dow does not mean 500 points on the Nasdaq 100, considering everything. Majority of the names are still underneath supply. So Netflix, very frustrating stock, you know. So I, I got long Netflix today. I'm like, and, right? The stock doesn't do anything. You know, the one thing, the problem with Netflix, I mean, here's another, Netflix and, and Roku, if anybody's listening, can, can these damn things split already? I mean, where is the liquidity on these things? Even if you wanted liquidity, you can't even get liquidity. And that's kind of like the gift and the curse. So when you're wrong, you're not making any money. I mean, excuse me, you're not really losing any money. But when you're right, you really need such a big move for these things to go. So uh, yesterday it popped up off that 591, 592 area. It confirmed 96. It just sat there and sat there and sat there and spread me down and spread me up. And I finally just just dumped, dumped the damn thing. I, this thing really, really needs a split. Uh, AFRM, this is kind of what we talked about. 115, uh, 115, 50, 116 needs to build. Uh, stock absolutely went out of its mind. Uh, again, they were coming for uh, the 130s, the 150s. This thing went to uh, all the way to 129. Any, uh, any, uh, any weakness tomorrow into rising 60-minute support, uh, you got to at least entertain the fact of getting some on the dip. Uh, look, looks, looks higher. Looks like it wants that 132 area uh, for tomorrow. Uh, MDB, talk about a thin stock. Uh, I, I watched it this morning trade with a $3 spread. Safe to say, I'm not playing this thing. Uh, thinner cloud name, 115 needs to be. Potential swing close over 115. Again, I like the chart. It's just not for me. Way, way. I mean, I don't even know how you could trade this thing. Okay, I, I really don't. You have to literally close your eyes and go into prayer mode. But if this thing closes over 115, guys, uh, 515, keep an eye on this thing. This thing closes over 515. There is $50 worth of upside. I just have zero interest uh in this name uh square big beautiful move here and again here's a perfect example if it opens below 262 would be wonderful if not 264 uh needs to build again look at square right look look what they did with uh look what they did to square at the open right you started seeing these big aggressive call buyers they came in with some pretty good size here quarter of a million 350 uh they came in for the october 7250s uh they came in for the 265s right they came in for the 270 weeklies and uh, Square exploded, right? We talked about Square last night. Uh, Square uh, exploded. Re you know, really, really aggressive move. Um, you know, big move. Which, you know, I, I, it's, if the market continues to go higher, I think this thing sees uh, the 370s. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see what else. Uh, CRM explosion uh, got upgraded today. Good guidance. 268.50 uh, rejected twice. Needs to build. Here is CRM, just an absolute monster move, right? It took out this whole area here, just went absolutely nuts. Uh, CRM on uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is starting to get good. Maybe it's setting up for a macro move. Uh, if NVIDIA opens below 220, it needs to build, or 220 and a half, 220, 223. Here was uh, NVIDIA. It looks higher. It really does. It looks higher. It went to like 25 and change. But here's the whole macro channel. I would love to see this thing confirm. I would love to see some aggressive option flow in the name. Maybe it finally, finally starts attacking uh, this upper range here. Um, Roku for experienced traders only. 336 needs to build. It went to 340 and then kind of died out. I had a I had a bounce play in this thing. I took like a dollar and change out of it, but it was very weak off the open. Um, 
nothing really there. Facebook never got down to uh, never got down to uh, to that level. Microsoft stalled out. Uh, it stalled out around that. Uh, you know, it made a little bit of a move, but Microsoft stalled out. Uh, at that 30 and a half level, went to like uh, 31, but it really stalled out uh, at that level. I'm really not sure why. Again, again, it really does show you not everything uh, is ready to go. Uh, again, monster move on Square. Uh, Nvidia starting to push. AFRM starting to push. Uh, Tesla, you know, never got, you know, never got to this 566, 5, uh, 766, 756, 757 level. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it for tomorrow. Here comes 126. Uh, Amazon, uh, any close over 3 to 34, 20. Big buyer comes in for the 3500s. We got to keep an eye on this thing uh, for tomorrow. LRCX, I still like. And again, here's a perfect example of option flow. BKSY, I bought, odd buyer comes in for the October 20th call. The stock is under 11, right? Here comes, and here's kind of my point. Not everything is repeat option flow, but a buyer came in. Right here it is. A buyer came in again. It was only twenty grand, but again, it kind of gets your attention. You you look in this thing. You wait. Wait a minute. A guy comes in for a twenty thousand dollar bet. Maybe it's a little. Maybe it's a lot to people. But the point is, it's three weeks expiration. The stock is nine dollars out of the money. And if you look at the stock after the option flow, right? And I still think it probably maybe gets one more push. But look at the stock after the option flow. The stock took out you know ten eighty seven. Here here was the spot where the flow ten eighty two. And the stock went to 1150. This thing, you know, looks like you know, looks like tomorrow if it confirms, maybe it gets to 12. Who knows? Maybe it gets to 13. As somebody says, maybe somebody actually knows something. So uh, that's that as well. Uh, life stalled out here. Um, life stalled out a little bit uh, off that 13 level. Never gave a second entry. Uh, here comes AFRM. Blah blah blah. And I believe that is it. So going into tomorrow, look, you, you definitely want to don't want to look at anything. That is overextended, that's for sure. After this big three-day run, uh, you want to concentrate on names that are coming out of the channel with very, very tight you know, moves. Option flow would be perfect, right? And the most important thing is do not anticipate. Do not put bets on the table uh, until the stock confirms macro. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.